Hello friends, the 584 days of the war between Russia and Ukraine continues. In the Melitopol sector, the Ukrainian armed forces had partial success along the N-08 highway. The Russians in turn are trying to advance at Novoprokopivka without tangible progress but at the same time slowing down the pace of Ukrainian offensive. The Ukrainian telegram channel Deep State reports that it is not possible to gain a foothold over the road from Robotene near the village. According to them, the main reason is that the enemy is counterattacking and doing Soviet elite paratrooper units. Thus, now both north of the village and the south, there are Russian airborne troops which are more difficult to penetrate than those whom our troops wiped out in August, right deep state. A video filmed by Ukrainian fighters in Robotene has appeared. The village is almost completely destroyed. There are damaged Ukrainian vehicles on the roads, apparently a Bradley infantry fighting vehicle, and debris from drones litter the ground. Friends, before continuing, I would like to draw your attention to the young channel of Maria Vishunova. She posts daily videos with map reviews and the latest news about the war in Ukraine. Let's support Maria and help her develop her channel. The sounds of battle can be heard in the distance, but apparently the situation in the shooting area is reality calm. The military are working without ducking. Let me remind you, the Ukrainian announced the liberation of Robotene, while Russian telegram channel claims that part of the village is in the grey zone. Heavy fighting also continues west of Verbova, without any changes along the front line. Also today, a photo of downed Russian Su-35 near Tokmak appeared. The interesting thing is that he was mistakenly shot down by the Russian air defense system. The Russian attack on the Vremivka salient, where they managed to occupy a number of positions in the Priyutne area. My friends, the robot will continue. Both Ukrainian and Russian telegram channels write about the tactical success of Russian troops. At the same time, in their reports, in addition to attacks from Priyutny, the Russians write about their attempts to attack in the Eurozhane area. A video also appeared from the Russian side of allegedly blowing up a bridge over the Shaitanka River in the southern part of Voluka Novosilka. If this video is genuine, then in this way Russian troops want to complicate the logistics of the Ukrainian army in Eurozhane. In general, the picture looks like the Russians are trying to seize the initiative in this sector of the front. I would like to note that there is no confirmation from the Ukrainian side yet of either the attack in the Eurozhane area or the damaged bridge in Voluka Novosilka. Near Bakhmut, despite mutual attacks, the line of combat contact has remained virtually unchanged recently. In the Telegram channel, the Ukrainian military fighting in the Bakhmut sector today reported a small advance in the Klishchivka area. Meanwhile, Russia essentially confirmed yesterday that Wagner PMCs are returning to the front. Putin met with former PMC commander Trashev. Putin recalled that at their previous meeting he instructed Trashev to engage in the formation of volunteer units for the war in Ukraine. You yourself fought in such a unit for more than a year. You know what it is, how it's done, you know about the issues that need to be resolved in advance so that combat work goes in the best and most successful way, Putin said. Also present at the meeting in the Kremlin was Deputy Defense Minister Yevkarov, who, according to media reports, is overseeing the transfer of the remnants of the Wagner PMC under the control of the Russian Ministry of Defense. That is, apparently, Trashev will command the Wagner PMC, which is now being returned to Ukraine. By the way, it was under his leadership that Putin called for the Wagnerites to go over at a meeting in the Kremlin at the end of June after the failure of Prigozhin's rebellion. 
As I said earlier, recently more and more information has been received about the return of former mercenaries of the Wagner PMC to Bakhmut in the area of which the Ukrainian armed forces are conducting offensive operations. Yesterday, the American Institute for the Study of War reported that the Russian army had reduced the pace of its offensive in the Kharkiv direction. In recent days, Russian units have reduced the intensity of the offensive on the kupiansk svatovy criminal line. In particular, both Ukrainian and Russian officials report a decrease in the number of attacks in the Kupiansk and Leman directions. According to the Institute's experts, Ukrainian offensive operations have withdrawn Russian troops from the front line in the Kharkiv direction and have significantly worsened Russia's offensive efforts along this line. At the same time, the representative of the Eastern Group of Forces, Yevlesh, said that the invaders are preparing for an offensive in the Kharkiv direction. According to him, if earlier the enemy strengthened its fortifications in this direction, now the number of airstrikes there has increased significantly. From my own sources, I learned that the Russians intensified the aviation component, striking only Serebryanka several times a day. They use Ka-52 helicopters and Su-25 aircraft for shelling according to the carousel principle when launches follow one after another. Moreover, the enemy, obviously knowing the tactical and technical data of our air defense systems, as a rule does not enter their destruction zone. Yevlash also reports that, according to his data, the Russians in the Kharkiv sector are forming 12 assault companies with approximately 2,000 people. According to him, they will try to punch holes in the Ukrainian defense. The Ukrainian telegram channel Deep State writes that the Russians suffered a fiasco in the battles for Novoy Horivka in the Svatovy sector. According to him, in the period from mid-August to mid-September, numerous enemy attacks on Novoy Horivka were repelled. The Russians used many tanks and other types of armored vehicles when attempting attacks. Despite the complexity of the fighting, the Ukrainian armed forces managed to stop the attack and, in some places, push back the Russians. At the moment, they have lost offensive potential in this area, writes Deep State. The Russians are publishing footage of attacks on bridges over the Oskil River in the Kharkiv direction, trying to cut off supplies to the Ukrainian armed forces on the eastern bank. Here's what it looks like on the map. I will publish the videos of the strikes on Patreon, where I invite you. Join us, I will be glad to see you. Meanwhile, Western experts made a number of statements on the situation with the Ukrainian counteroffensive. Thus, Chief of the British General Staff Tony Radikin reported that Russian defenses in the South were stronger than the West expected. When you look at the beginning of the counteroffensive, there were moments when Ukraine wanted to secure a little more equipment, more ammunition, then a period of bad weather came and that affected it. Then you did some war games and assessments of Russia, and then actually some of these Russian defenses turned out to be stronger than expected, Radikin said after a visit to Kiev. Also, according to him, the Ukrainian troops are hampered by a wide variety of equipment in service and insufficient training of soldiers. If you are in Kiev and talking with General Zaluzhny, then he has a fleet of equipment, some of which is former Soviet, some from all over the world, and at the same time his troops are not professional soldiers, they are a civilian army. How can you force a civilian army to fight the way Ukraine is fighting in order to overcome Russian defenses? There is an element of humility and sobering in this, Radikin said. In Poland, they believe that Ukraine's biggest problem is manpower on the battlefield and the lack of modern aviation. Build military analyst Julian Rock writes about this after negotiations with Polish security experts in Poland. Ukraine's biggest problem is human resources, the journalist wrote. According to him, the Ukrainian army needs combat-ready fighters more urgently than Western weapons. They are losing their best qualities. NATO's training is still insufficient. At the same time, the Russian army is becoming stronger, not weaker. They learned from their mistakes. Now they are much more effective than a year ago, Rock reports the words of Polish military experts. Russian drones are getting better every month. The new Shahid drones make less noise, making them harder to hear and therefore harder to target. 
Their Lancet Kamikaze drones have a longer range. Their FVP drones are growing in number every month. Drones may decide the outcome of this war, the journalist writes. At the same time, a strategic victory for Ukraine is still possible, but, of course, not guaranteed. Europe must prepare for a long war. In this situation, Ukraine becomes a playground for Western defense industry. Western companies are coming to test their latest weapons. Ukraine and weapons companies are learning a lot from each other. It's a win-win, writes Rock. Another Western analyst believes that the successes of the Ukrainian armed forces during the offensive in the South are overestimated, and the situation may just about tilt in Russia's favor. This was stated by Colonel of the Austrian Armed Forces and military expert Marcus Reisner. Individual Russian defense lines are being overcome with heavy losses, but so far there has not been a single real breakthrough. We must sound the alarm that after 117 days of counteroffensive it has still not been possible to achieve an operational breakthrough, Reisner said in an interview with Deutsche Presse Genter. In his opinion, Ukraine does not receive enough military equipment, including that which will help defend against Russian airstrikes in the rear. Europe is about to miss the moment when we will no longer have it under control and the situation will tilt in favor of the Russians, the colonel said. He calls, in particular, for strengthening Ukrainian air defense to minimize attacks on critical infrastructure. After all, if Ukraine's electricity supply is again seriously damaged, the basis for weapons production will also be broken, Reisner notes. Friends, considering what is happening in my country, this channel is now my only source of income. If you are able to support me financially, I will be very grateful. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.